Hey man, how's it going? Hey, it's going all right. Good to see you. Welcome to my humble, humble abode. <laughs> I like what you've done there. Uh, yes, hi everybody. It's Lee from Andertons here and I'm joined in split screen all the way from sunny Newcastle or somewhere thereabouts. Um, Paul Heimarsh from Line 6, you know, friend of, friend of the show, known Paul for a long time. Um, and today we are going to attempt a world first of a split screen <laughs> um, pod go <laughs> demo. So uh, Paul's got a pod go, I've got a pod go. Um, we're not, it's not a live video as such, so we're not jamming, but I'm hoping Paul's recorded himself, I'm recording myself, we're talking via FaceTime, and I'm hoping we'll be able to put it all together. Uh, and we've got some questions that I've got, Paul will obviously take us through the product, and I've even got some questions that you guys have asked me on Facebook and Instagram to ask Paul about the, the product. So Paul, this is the first time Pod and Helix have kind of, you know, merged. Yeah, kind of. Kind of, it's a, it's, a, it's a different sort of beast from, from Helix, but, but yeah, it's all HX modeling. So, so sound wise, it's the same sounds that people have been using in studios for the, you know, the last four or five years, you know, and, 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 and on stages all around the world, you know. So, so yeah, sound wise, it's like, it's, it's like that. It's a much more stripped down interface though. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a, it's a, more, it's a more portable unit. You stick it in a backpack, stick it in a, in a rucksack, take it to the gig and it has everything that you need sort of on there as well. Cool. Well, look, so, I mean, I don't mind. We can, we can deep dive or we, you know, said my, I, I literally took this out the box about an hour ago. Um, it fires up. It feels fairly familiar. I quite yep. like, I quite like the size of the screen. I like that it's color. Um, yep. And definitely uh, you can hear that it's Helix powered, you know, in the sense of the amp models feel familiar if you're a Helix yep. user. So do you just want to go over, you know, what are the sort of the bullet points? Um, I suppose the main thing that people will be going is why, uh, what does the, either the Helix LT or the full Helix do that this doesn't do? And so if you're not necessarily interested in those things, therefore Podgo, because Podgo is about half the price of a Helix LT, right? Yeah. So substantially yeah. less money. Um, so, you know, who's this? Uh, who, who do you think this is uh, aimed at as opposed to someone that might have gone full helix? So this is somebody who's probably just got a, a simpler sort of outlook in terms of the, the signal chain. Um, so on Helix LT and, and, and obviously the full, the full fat helix, uh, you can have dual amp setups as well. So I could have, you know, like a, a plexi sound and a twin sound at different speakers with different effects. This is not going to allow you to do that. But in, in real life, a lot of people don't do that anyway. You know, you have, a, you have a bunch of pedals, you have your amp, and then you maybe have some pedals in the loop. This is going to do that perfectly well within its own little its, its signal chain there. Uh, Helix is obviously something if you want to have a ton of different effects on at the same time, if you want to have really complex routing, it's going to do that. This is a... This is a much, a much more, for, for a more straight ahead kind of player, I guess, but it still has all those same sounds. So you're still able to achieve, you know, not many people in the world need to have, you know, 32 effects on it at oh. once or anything like that, you know? So, um, so yeah, and, and like you say, it's, they've adopted a lot of the things that we've sort of learned over the last few years that have been really popular with users. So exactly like you said, you've got the colored, colored LCDs or L, LCD rings around the, the, the foot switches. You've got a nice color screen on there as well. Um, and then the colour coding is obviously the same as, as, as all the, the rest of the products. Well, let, well. Let, let's get into this. I mean, I, I haven't changed yep. any of the presets. I don't know if, are you, so are we using effectively the same models or have you got um, some, have you tweaked some of the, the, mod, the models on yours? I haven't tweaked any of the models. I've got some, I mean, I've tweaked the presets right. as, as always, because it's different guitars, different players, all, all kinds of things, you know. So, so I always end up tweaking those almost every time I sit down, I'm going to be doing <laughs> so, something really like I would be with, a, with an amp and, and actual pedals. Um, I mean, I can find the same preset as you if you want. No, or we I, could just I, go through the... I, I suppose it's only, 
Yeah, because I, uh, just so you guys know, I can't see Paul's pod go and he can't <laughs> see mine in this demo. So we're, we're, we're trying to, um, anyway, that's fine. So the first one I've got, uh, the, the, you know, the very first one it powers up with is US Deluxe NRM, I guess not normal input. And from the graphical interface, it still looks like I've got five, sorry, four effects prior to the amp and four effects. I know one of them's a cabinet, so three effects after the amp. Uh, so is that typically, is that like a maxed out patch with that many effects and amp models running? Yeah, so sorry, I'm just finding the same, just finding the same preset. It's zero one A if it's... Yeah, uh, so yeah, US Deluxe normal. Sorry, I just, I, I just moving away from the sort of the, the, the my user preset. Yeah. So basically what you've got there is you've got, you've got nine blocks. Now you can see that in that signal chain there you have a, a, a wah pedal, uh, then you've got a volume. Right. Um, we've also got EQs, distortions, we've got the amp model. Um, what else have we got? Somebody, so somebody's, yeah, we have a reverb in the middle of the, the amp and the cab. Yeah. And as I scroll along there, then we've got an optical trem and then we've got a parametric EQ. Right. And that, that would be, so nine blocks, and we're assuming that one of those blocks is always going to be an amp and one potentially a cab. Yes. So, but that's still I'll, more than most people would have on a, as you say, for, for uh, a good percentage of users, possibly even the majority of users, that's, that would represent more than enough pedals, wouldn't it, in a, in a, in a setup? Yes, abso absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So you've probably got you're probably looking at um, sort of preset view there or play view at the moment. Yeah. So if you if you press the view thing, this will toggle you between two states. So you've got play mode and you've got edit mode. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, okay, I like I like two. the view in. Uh, yeah, I like. Ah, uh, I love. So okay, that's really that's actually I think that's almost clearer than Helix, but it's. It's well. That's another. I mean, that's what we said before. It's it's yeah. a really straightforward plug yeah. and play, easy to use sort of unit. So, okay. So yeah. So so play view is where you're going to be out. You're going to be doing a gig, and you you know you want to just jam through sounds yeah. that you've already created. If you press that view and you go into edit view, then you're going to have the. You can see we've got a wah. Yeah. Now, there's always there's always going to be a wah in, in any of the presets. You move along. You've got the volume pedal. Always going to be a volume pedal. Uh, move along again. You've got the effects loop. So you've got to send and return there because it'll allow you yeah. to do that with your sort of favorite pedals. Then you've got dynamics, you've got distortion, you've got the amp block, you've got a 63 spring reverb, you've got a cabinet model there, and then you've got an optical trem, and you've got an EQ there as well. And so, I can change, you know, they're not predetermined. I can remove those blocks. I can switch the amps off if I just want to use it into a normal amp. I can yeah. switch cabs off if I need to. And I can, yeah, mix, so, I can move the order of them around if I want. Absolutely, yeah. So if you wanted to go and say you were just plugging this into the front of an amp, if you just turn that along back to the amp, so yeah. it just says, you, and if you just press that in, Pre press it. That, oh, and press then it goes dark, and then it's and then yeah. So you can see it's just it's it's nice it's clear, there. Right? So so anything you do there, you can actually <laughs> you can you can switch them off. If you want to pick it up, if you press action, action, yeah, yeah, oh, that yeah. just basically lifts it up and moves it around in the signal chain. Ah, and then just that's action. so cool. <laughs> action again and it'll drop it straight back it'll drop it straight back down i like it so yeah um, so you got all of that now on top of all that if you want to change those amps really Again, really quick and easy. Um, so if I'm, I'm still currently on the amp block. Yeah. If me I too. then, if I then turn that bottom, bottom sort of knob. The one there, in between the page ones. Yeah. 
yeah. that's going to take you through all the different amp ah. models. And will there. that, okay, that's not changing the cab at the same time, is it? So I potentially want to change the cab for something more. So, no, so you can have it, you can have it both ways with this. So you could, if you wanted to, have it so it auto selects the cab. So, so currently, okay. I believe yours will be auto selecting that cabinet. Um, I tend to, I tend to defer. To, I would tend to use the same sort of cabinet models oh, a lot I anyway. So sorry. So vision. So, I know what it is because so the graphic of the actual head isn't changing and the graphic of the cab isn't changing. But what yes. you're saying is behind the scenes, it is actually changing the cab. Yes. The, right. Understood. Absolutely. But you can stop it from doing that. And yeah. I, I, I personally prefer to stop it from doing that because I. Yeah. I tend to have a favourite cab, like one of the 412s there, and it just means that every amp I yeah. choose, I can run through one of the 412s. Sp speaking of cabs, sorry if we're jumping in and around, mm -hmm. um, are these just preset cab emulations from Line 6, or is there any sense of um, downloadable IRs? Uh, yes, you can load impulse responses into there as well. Yeah? So all the, soft all the software's up, up and running now, so you've got Pod Go Edit, so right. it'll load, I think it's 128 different impulse responses there. Um, wow. And obviously we have, and now, which I don't, I'm not sure if we had last time we saw you, we've got um, Line 6 Marketplace. So we have people creating impulse responses and selling impulse responses on there. And, wow. You know, and and in, impulse responses, as you know, they're not very expensive. They're actually really, no. they're, yeah. they're actually really, they're really cheap. They're, yeah. You know, yeah. I think maybe the, the, only, the only sort of thing with impulse responses, obviously you just get so many yeah. There's so many of them, you know, it's just, it's a, just a bit of a rabbit well, hole. I think, I think that's why some of the guys that become like these trusted market resellers for Kemper or Helix or whatever, you know, it's almost, you don't mind spending five bucks or 10 bucks with those guys because, you know, it's all going to be good stuff. viewer has very patiently sat and listened through some blurb i think we should do some playing and then do some more blurb so do you just want to pick out i don't know two or three sounds that maybe some of your favorite clean crunch and and gainier sounds and we'll just have a little listen to those yeah sure <laughs> Well, I can add to that uh, a kinky boost, which is up on this pedal here. A kinky boost? A kinky boost, yes. <laughs> and then add another drive to that as well. So that's all sitting there on there. So, Naughty. Uh, <laughs> so this is a, a Rev Gen amp with a, a script phase. And you can oh. see I've got the, <laughs> and you can see I've got this big blue foot switch here which is the script, it's one of the modulation effects, so I can knock that off. Yeah. I think, I think the heavy guys have kind of been a Line 6 fans for a while now. Yeah. Um, I mean, certainly even that, the predecessor to, to Helix, the pod, you know, Pod HD Pro and all that, Definitely, definitely, there was a lot of heavier bands that used that high gain gated kind of tone. Um, yep. Helix, for me now, seems to be breaking a few barriers down with some of the more traditional guys. So can, can we can we go into things like, you know, what what if there is just a nice, uh, whether it's a, like a Fender Deluxe or, I mean, I, I noticed, which I thought was very brave of line six i noticed quite a lot of presets that were vox inspired and they're there for right. me that's the amp that digitally 
you know, I'm not saying it's the best sound. It, it's not. It's certainly not my favourite sounding amplifier, but it, it's a sound, and it's the one that I think digitally um, most brands struggle to to make sound authentic. But I, I I don't know if it's a statement of intent by Line Six, but there's there's at least six or eight Vox patches within the first twenty or so patches here. So they're obviously going obviously confident that they've that they've nailed something here. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think that with modeling just getting better and better, you know, or, or, or at least like suddenly making a, a dramatic improvement. Um, it, 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 things break up much better now than they ever did. You know, the volume control and the guitar works much better. It's much more sensitive to your hands. So, you know, back in the back in the old days of modeling, it was it was kind of if you just added a really distorted fuzzy sound, it kind of just hid everything, could yeah. hide everything else. But but now there's so much sort of nuance, yeah. nuance in all those sounds. You know? So yes, I mean the next sound I was going to come to actually was a is a um, good Fendry sort of sound. I like that. We should say, guys, that what you're hearing is uh, either if I haven't played yet, but as I'm, uh, you know, I will have a little noodle in a minute. But what you're hearing is the pod go straight into an interface. So um, everything you're hearing, effects, amp modeling, everything is straight from pod go. It does have uh, an amp output if you want to run this into uh, your guitar combo. I, I would suggest that probably works best if you've got an effects return or some way of going you know bypassing the preamp on your amp going straight in you can elect to switch off the amp and the cab modules model sorry if you want to uh, and then I guess it becomes a bit more like something like a cut down version of a helix stomp or a helix effects doesn't it sort of like a um, but I, I yeah I, my, my or, or you can do both you know you can have the amp out into your amp for your on-stage monitoring and the, the two main outputs to the PA for, for front yeah. of house. And just, and just to add to that, Lee, as well, I don't know if you were just about to say this, sorry, but that amp out can have two different roles. It can, it can send the full, the full fat sort of signal with all the cab model and everything to your amp if you want, but you probably don't want that. You probably don't want the cab model to go to your actual on-stage amp. So you can actually have it so it taps off that signal right. just before it gets to the cab model. So in that way, I could have this, this on the stage, yeah. stereo out to the PA with the cab model or the impulse response on there, yeah. and then the amp out just running into the amp. And, and like potentially you say, just the, into a powered wedge then or something, if you really, you know, if, or, or into the Line 6 powered cabs. Yeah, absolutely. If, I mean, if you, if you did that, though, you would want... Well, power cabs are a slightly different thing, but if you want to run in just a powered wedge, you would want the speaker cabinet yes. modeled back yeah. on there. Yes. So if you're plugging into a traditional amp, you would you would run the amp out in okay. that sort of way. If you're running into a power cab, yeah, absolutely, you could yeah. do that as well. You could have IRs. But, I mean, power cab opens up all kinds of doors to all, all right. kinds of different things. Sorry. Uh, okay, so, I mean, I like that clean sound. Is there something with a little bit more hair on it? So either Voxy or Vintage marshall -y, that kind of... Uh... Yeah, let me just have a look and see what I have. I mean, bizarrely, the, the, the front page of the... I quite like the fact that, you know, on the, the very first page that you go to, it's like... Just complete straight up, you, you know, Fender Deluxe kind of sound. Yeah. Uh, you've then yeah. got your AC30. Then you've got your plexi. Uh, and then the Cali. It's, it's almost like the first four patches are the history of guitar amps. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. completely clean yeah. Fender, slightly broken up Vox, sort of dirty old Marshall, and then modern drive. And um, yeah, I mean, the, I I like now how in more recent years brands like uh, Line Six have just gone. Okay, let's if all we're going to have is the first four or five, um, you know, the first four or five uh, 
uh, patches let's just do straight up guitar sounds let's not you know go in with the 85 different effects layered over everything yeah so we have our uh, we have this sort of brick j45 I can add any kind of stereo effect on that and get. Get big stereo things right. that you wouldn't, like with traditional amp, you wouldn't maybe always be able to do. Uh, moving to some different presets, uh, things like the uh, fuzz, really nice in here. So uh, without the fuzz, and hopefully you can see this on the foot switch. <laughs> Add in this facial fuzz. There, there was multiple, nasty. multiple stank faces there. I'm pretty sure you pulled one at some point in there. I definitely did. Um, I like it. Yeah, and then you've got big thing, you know, like a, there's a this uh, Uber, so German Uber, Uber, Uber Charlie Camp. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, oh. I can add an effect called a double take, which splits the sound into stereo and makes it sound like you've got two guitar players there. It sort of slightly delays one and you uh -huh. know, like the, the sort of double tracking thing. <laughs> I love, yeah. I love the filter you've got on there as well, like the, the, the sort of the, like a Qtron kind of vibe in there. Unless that's yeah. just what FaceTime is doing to the sound in my headphones. <laughs> I, think it might, I, think it might, I can add, I can add one to you. We'll make that, I can make that, I can make that make sense. If, if any of you guys have ever played guitar via FaceTime, you'll know that it, it, that it's not the best way of listening. But fortunately for you, what you're hearing is the sound that uh, is in Paul's room. Um, yeah, so absolutely. So, so yeah, I mean, there's just so many possibilities there with all, with all the answer, the clean, you know, the clean sounds right through the dirty sounds and stuff. And, you know, like the, the, we've also, I mean, I just came across a preset there, which reminded me as well. We've, we've actually got all the snapshots on there as well. Yeah. So snap, snapshots is something that came from the, the bit there, you know, from the actual, from the Helix range. And that's a great way of having multiple different variations of a, I mean, we've done videos on this before, yeah. but it's so multiple variants it. of the same patch within a patch. Yeah. Um, I just thought, I'm sort of intrigued, only because I've not had a lot of time with this. I thought, um, I'm going to just take that first patch, the, the 01A Deluxe. You know, I like the Fender Deluxe as a, as, a, as a clean sound for putting pedals on. Yeah. There's my lick that I have to play in every video. Uh, and I, without any cajoling from you or any advice, I'm just going to see if I can work out. Now, you, you can't see what I'm doing here, but how maybe, oh, I don't want to change the amp, but I want to, here we go. So I want to put, a different drive pedal on there so i go along it's the minotaur or minotaur so what's that kind of clonny vibe yep. is it okay so i wouldn't normally have that into a fender oh, i see so i've got the team are the timmy i guess which i do like deranged master kinky boost none <laughs> that's probably the best sounding one for me uh compulsive drive that's going to be like an ocd isn't it valve drive top secret overdrive screamer 808, so I find that, that that I would traditionally. And then you can see straight underneath, or I say you can see, I can see as well, that it just is dead easy to use, you know, these five knobs underneath here to just like a pedal would be. And if I yeah. didn't like that one, I can just hedgehog. I mean, these are bigger yeah. fuzzes, aren't they? And it's probably worth just saying that you know you, you, you've got you've got nine blocks there. Five of them are already sort of taken up, but four of them are flexible effects. So those four can be anything you wanted. So if you wanted to stack four different overdrives together, 
you ah. could do that as well. So, or you could have two overdrives and two delays, or you know, so how whichever combination. How would I? Oh, oh, look, different views. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, so, so Paul you're... can't see what I've done there. So I've pressed the uh, the knob in between the two page controls, and now, yep. so that now, oh, I see. Yep. So I can choose which type of effect that I want to put in there. Absolutely. And then yeah, I can so, also change which uh, one of those blocks. Wow, that's actually a slightly quicker way of getting to what you want, isn't it? Yes. So um, in, that, in that respect, it's, it's almost like the top knobs is going to scroll you sort of horizontally along. Yeah. And the, the bottom knob sort of vertical through the amps. The and, and I've picked a different effects. pedal here and you can see what's happened now. This particular, let me turn my volume down. This particular pedal has got four uh, controls. So now four of the five knobs underneath the, the screen work. So it's really straightforward. <laughs> Well, I mean, that couldn't really be a lot simpler. And then, yeah, I like it. And then how did I yeah. get to, how did you s switch it into uh, stomp mode again? Oh, mode so over here. That's, that's the, big, the big pedal there, yeah. There we go. So it's, it's like, it's the, I mean, these, these things are so intuitive now, you yeah. know I mean? It's like, uh, there's a lot of things that Line 6 sort of took from the Helix and learned from the Helix that people really liked. And a lot yeah. of that cool stuff's come down into this, you know? So it's almost, in some ways, it's it's not worth spending much time on it because anybody could go no. to the shop and just plug in and plug in and, and go. You know, plug there's in a lot play, to so. be said. I, I do think again when when you go back to that very first, or not quite the very first, but the, probably the first that most people remember product from Line Six. You know, the kidney bean pod. Everything on that was the was the combination of some some for the time really great sounding. Uh, digital modeling and effects but also in an interface that just didn't need a manual to get you know like 99 percent out of it um yeah. and i'm kind of feeling podgo captures that initial essence of of the easiness of pod but with you know up-to-date uh, modeling in it um I, th I think you could have taken that straight from the marketing manual there that was right that's basically exactly what line six yeah. were, what yeah, aim, I, were I, aiming at them it's very very cool so look uh, as promised, I am just going to jump on and see what questions we may have got from Facebook or Instagram. And of course, we'll edit this bit out if there haven't been any. <laughs> uh, this was just so you know, I put a little video up about 10 minutes before we did this video just to say, look, if you've got a question you want me to ask Paul, I will. So from Facebook, um, yeah, I mean, Alan uh says uh can it replace a heavy amp for a fat unfit pub band player <laughs> i assume he's talking about himself uh but yes <laughs> uh, hopefully everything you've heard in this demo yeah. is effectively what would come out of your pa uh when yes. is it when is it coming from neil uh they're coming in june aren't they i think june yes, 2020 I believe it's i believe your stocks are going to start of june yeah is there a split screen mode built into the pod go i'm not even sure i know what that means there's no, no. There's, there's lots of different screens not not in, yeah, entirely you've got, you got you've just basically there's your two views there you've got play view you've got edit view and okay and here's a good one mode. so could you use the four cable method on a pod go or is that sort of you need all the ios in helix to do that no nope, you could still do that so there's a stereo effects loop on here Yep. So yeah, abs absolutely. You could just take that down to a mono effects loop. And because you can reposition everything in the signal chain, you could actually position that in exa exactly where you need it to, exactly where you need it to be. Uh, Chris Buck, the lovely and most tasteful guitar player that I probably know, or certainly one of them, uh, he has said, are there any good presets in and around the 14C area? <laughs> I, 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 w I wonder, Let, let's have a little look. Um, Let's have a little look at 14C. 14C. My word, there only is, isn't there? Although I think I can uh, attest to the fact that I still won't sound like Chris, but let's... Uh... That's my one little half step that I don't do as nicely as Chris. What's the deal there? Have you got various artists doing patches for these now, or is it is Chris just the one? 
Uh, no, there's a bunch of different so there's a bunch of different uh, artists in there uh, as well. Uh, Vernon Reed's done a, a, a preset in there, which is crazy as you would expect from Vernon, Vernon Reed. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, jazz. Some of the Line Six community have done some great presets in there. Jason did a bunch of, of, of great stuff. Um, my presets are in there, which came from the sort of the demo that I did at Nam. Awesome. Um, the thing to be aware of with my presets is that I use snapshots. So snapshot number two is the clean amp. That's the the basic one, and then it goes to snapshot number one for right. all this for all the crazy stuff and all the stereo stuff. Yeah. Um, if you just come across my preset, you will immediately get to all the crazy stereo stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, Again, so uh, Charlie uh, Charlie wants to know: Can you stack? the same effect or are the slots assigned? I think we already answered that. You can stack the same yeah. effect into each other if you want to. Yeah, Someone wants course. to know the price. I mean, the price is obviously going to go up and down, I'm sure, over the next few years or months. But right now for release, it's £3.99. Oh, £3.99. Check your local. That's at least what Anderton's is selling. It at. Check your local you know, country if you want to know. Uh, shipping in June. Are there any good base presets? Now, that is a good question let me just unplug here because i spotted yeah, I mean, some base presets so, so because it's i mean it's, there's there's over 270 different amps and effects in here uh, and it's pretty much everything from helix so along with that you get all of the base amp models you get all of the base carbs and you get the base effects as well so I, i'm not exactly sure about the base presets but certainly for base for base players this is ideal as well so again without spending too long they're all named after you know famous bass rigs so with the look since we've got aguilar we've got uh, ampeg um i guess ampeg is easy for you now right because it's all part of the same family yamaha ampeg and line six are all part of the same the same absolutely family. and you'll, you'll notice you'll notice it actually it's it actually says ampeg now because it's yeah it's, it's, oh because you're allowed so to yeah yeah <laughs> I can't play bass, as you guys all know, but here we go. I tell oh, you what, that's I, good. I, I have been enjoying the Andertones band with you playing bass. That's a great, yeah. I really enjoy I, that. I mean, that's that is great. literally, it's the, the conversation goes, who's the worst guitar player in the room? You play bass. That's basically how it's decided. Um, I mean, I think it's great. So what we're really saying is this is not a guitar product with a few throwaway bass presets in it. This is as much to a bass player as it's likely to be to a guitar player. So away you go. Absolutely, um, yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, and obviously we have people like Billy Sheen who are out gigging with Helix and gigging with with these bass amps, you know. So oh, fantastic. You've got a, if you've got a good PA, you could have the guitar player using this and the bass player using using one as well, you know. So absolutely, it's a. It's it's a fully functional yep. bass effect. It's not the bass presets don't just bypass the amp. There there is a collection yep. of great amp models yep. on there. So we've had uh, we I think we covered. Um, Mart uh, wants to know again difference between Pod and Helix. So I think we've kind of covered that. It's predominantly the amount of uh, effects that you can have and uh, you know either simultaneously or chained up together yeah. and, and uh, it's it's very much that that dual path thing with helix that's a popular thing yeah. with helix is that is this this has only got the one path on there There's yeah. no, it's it's stereo but you can't split amps or yeah. have two amps yeah. uh cool story joe has asked how does it sound uh, straight out the XLR outputs? Well, that's the whole demo. So there we go. Uh, he does, in fairness, say, and again, he was about to pull the trigger on an HX stomp and just wonders, should he still go for that or, you know, potentially pod go? So, I mean, is the, I mean that, that's probably a, a better question than sort of full yeah. Helix versus this, isn't it? Because the price is very similar. Yes. So HX Stomp is great if you already have things that you, HX Stomp will sit on the pedal board, it'll work alongside other, other things. You've got the MIDI on there as well, so it can control other things. It also has the split paths. So if you, again, if you want to have two amps or you want to you know, route stuff off separately, HX Stomp's gonna do that. Um, so HX Stomp is, is it, it, it can be its own little thing, but really probably mm. HX Stomp's gonna be used in with, I just, with you know, so, HX, somebody with the HX Stomp's going to have a mission yeah. pedal. They're yeah, maybe going to have some say, external just, So no, no MIDI on the Pod Go. 
so that's that's a, that's interesting. So again, it's probably it's, more designed to be self-contained, isn't it, rather than used absolutely, within Absolutely, yeah. Within I mean, the, 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 the MIDI side of it's USB. So there's, there is MIDI, but it's USB right. in there. So again, okay. it's not something that you would use on, on, on stage. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, you can, but you, you've got, I was going to say, if you want to talk about the outputs and that, you know, we've got, you've got the effects loop on there and you can add an extra, an extra expression pedal on there. Yeah. So it could be, this could be part of a bigger rig, but HX stomps more likely to be used with yeah. other bits of gear. Um, I mean, just quickly whizzing through, the, I've got a, clearly got a more intelligent uh, follower on Instagram than I have on Facebook because the questions on Instagram are far more relevant uh, or far more interesting. Uh, so, uh, so we've talked, we've done a lot of the basic kind of amp sounds. There's a good question here. Is it, is it just the amp models that are from Helix and the effects are more of an older algorithm or is it the amps nope. and the effects are all from Helix? Amps and the effects, yeah. Ah, good, okay. And we talked about IRs, being able to load your own IRs in. So that was a good question from Jonathan Swift. Um, the USB output we've just discussed. So USB, presumably USB is a, is a recording interface as well as the way you'd use the editor and all that stuff. Is absolutely, it? yeah. So I mean, that's probably worth talking about as well because it's uh, USB is actually four channels of audio. So you've got your your main sort of audio on one and two, but it also has built-in reamp as well. So if you set up your door to record USB three and four, it'll just record the dry, unprocessed right. sound from the cable. I mean, that, yeah. that is so beneficial to yeah. me in, in what I do, you know, like being able to have, you know, unprocessed sound that I can go back and tweak later. So mm -hmm. I just play that track, set this up to record to, to the input to be USB 3 and 4 yeah. instead of the guitar single, and then run it back into the door. And I can... Ironically, I always thought that was one of the coolest features on the original Yamaha THR amps. Because the, the USB output on that is the same thing. You've got uh, two channels dry and two channels wet. So very clever. Uh, I think that's probably uh, everything. So, Paul, it's a shame we can't jam. Otherwise, I could have done some bass lines, and, but the, there'll be too much latency on this. Uh, I'll definitely, definitely, I think when our bass team is back in, we'll perhaps do a more focused right. video on the bass sounds because I'm conscious all I did was a couple of notes on three presets. But, Paul... Thank you kindly for joining us uh, in this I will look socially distanced, environmentally friendly, split screen demo. Yes, I will look forward to visiting the wonderful Guildford when all of this craziness is Absolutely. Ended, well, there. yes, let's have a virtual beer. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you want to just play us out then, Paul, with a, with a few seconds into Fade Out? And thank you guys all for watching. Uh, links below to find out more about PodGo. Of course, if you want to order one from Anderton's, that would be ace. Um, and uh, I'll put a link into where you can go and find out more about Paul's musical dalliances as well. <laughs> there we are. Okay. See you later, guys. Let's have a little play out. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers. Paul.